Welcome to Modern Musings, conversations with the maiden, mother, and crone, looking at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hello, and welcome back. I'm your hostess, Kristen, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Amber and Cindy. Hello. Hello. If this is your first time joining us, we're glad to have you here, and if you're returning, then welcome back. This week, we are talking seven secrets of a perfect kitchen. So I believe we did one, seven secrets to a perfect holiday. Yes, we did. And that one was really fun. And uh, I was like, man, we could do seven secrets of like a million different things. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to do uh, a perfect kitchen because we've done uh, cooking fails and we've talked hacks and... um, Lots of different things around that realm. And I thought, you know what? What would make the perfect kitchen? So I made my list. So hopefully you guys have an idea <laughs> of what. Or maybe, Not you know. I'm like thinking Maybe of it'll be like Boggle and I'll have some of them. And you things. can cross things off <laughs> uh, that I already mentioned. But, you know, definitely like I'll go through my list. And then you guys can chime in, uh, you know, if I didn't think of something that maybe you guys have a gadget or something that you really love. So, um, I am, uh, going to start off with a a really simple one, um, seven, there's only seven. So I'm going to start off with the, the bottom one and I'll leave my most favorite, most important one for last. Um, so to kick it off, my first seven, number seven is a phone charger. Oh, (laughs) um, yeah. So, uh. Nowadays, you know, recipes or what have you, whatever it is that you might do in the kitchen, mm-hmm. usually it's after a long day of work. And you've online, probably already usually, been on your yeah. phone. Yeah, everything's oh. online now. Yeah. And um, so I find that Travis and I are often charging our phone in the kitchen somewhere um, because the worst thing is while you're cooking, and you're in the middle of looking at a recipe online and your phone dies. I have something to add to that, like a phone stand charger to that you can anchor your phone on to see your recipe, so you can actually see it, (laughs) so you're not hovering over the counter. So I actually prop. I have a window over my sink, and I turn my phone on its side, and I'm either watching my soaps while I cook dinner Mm -hmm. with my earbuds Mm -hmm. in. Because I don't really need to watch it, you know. I recognize everybody's voices, or I'll listen to my audio book. So yeah, I but do that too. I usually end up propping my phone up against like something in the window. Mm-hmm. So it would be kind of nice if I had it like yeah, would, like a stand. Yeah. If this was like an <laughs> ultimate kitchen, wouldn't it be cool if it was like stuck to the fridge or stuck to the cabinet, right by the stove? Yeah. Well, and and when you say that, because uh, when when we were uh, many years ago, my husband and I were talking about, uh, we had, uh, like a little iPad stand uh-huh. that hooked to your kitchen cabinet doors, you know, the, the, above the overhead cabinet doors. Yeah. And you could put your iPad on there and have, and use it, you know, like mm-hmm. you have your recipe oh, online cool. or whatever. Well, that's and it's what just they do like on the there. cooking shows, yes. like on, um, MasterChef, my husband Or they'll have something watch. under the cabinet yeah, that hangs down. Have, right. Yeah, they'll have mm-hmm. like a, they have a tablet with all their recipes on it. And I would, and what? I would say that would they be do? like. Yeah. Oh my God. They I thought just, they just came up with that stuff off the top no, of their heads. No, they, they have Cheaters. like a hidden tablet with all the recipes what? and stuff on it. Oh, God, we, we, we could, Spoilers. I could do a whole, a whole episode on like behind the scenes on reality shows. Maybe we should do that in the future, but, um, <laughs> well, but you know, yeah, I that'd used be to, like perfect. I used to have a, a computer in my kitchen that had my database of recipes in there. I, I don't have it right now because it took up my old computer took up mm-hmm, so yeah. much cabinet space, but I've, I have, um, I have a network server here at the house now. And so I've I've considered just getting a little something where I can tap into my network server and just have all mm-hmm. the recipes on my server. Maybe and, like a one of the computers that you don't use as much, just mm-hmm. keep it in the kitchen so you can like pop it up yeah. with all your well, recipes. It on. would yeah. have to be something, you know, like a laptop or an iPad so, or something small. Yeah. Okay, so I have brought my laptop into oh, the I kitchen and it takes up too much space. It does. It takes it up really cabinet does. space. Because I've tried to iPad like zoom while I was cooking. Yes. Thing, you know, iPad would That's be why perfect. I thought the iPad would be perfect because you could have one of those little under the counter 
or under mm-hmm. the under the cabinet, not under the counter. Right. So it's like eye level. You can right. angle it. You can angle and it. Whatever. Slide yeah. it back up underneath, yeah. and it would still be close to a plug right. without like having the plug, you know, yeah. in a danger zone, like right where you're cutting with a knife. Exactly. That, I'm always afraid of that. I'm like. Keep that over there. Well, and I don't want to spill something on it either. So that was the other thing. And when I had the computer in the kitchen, it was on the opposite counter Mm -hmm. so that I had to turn around and look at it because I didn't want to spill on it or, you know, when I'm measuring flour and have stuff go down on the keyboard. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking in 10 years, we'll probably, you know, within 10 years, we'll have a more tech friendly kitchen i know there's like the fridges with um like the touch pad on them like oh, i, I, want I one know so bad. i really there's, want one that of those tells you there what were, food is in your fridge. there are refrigerators that have televisions and stuff in them too so you know mm-hmm. yeah i want one yeah you know, the one that but tells you what's in the fridge it's still <laughs> like all the the um the other appliances are still kind of archaic like i mean yeah. If you rent, sense, especially, yeah. like, there's some really old well, they're older, stoves yeah, and stuff yeah. out there, <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm just like, hmm, there's going to be more gadgets, I think, that are more uh, kitchen-centric because people really are cooking more. I mean, we mm-hmm. kind of have, like, this ebb and flow of people going out to eat and people cooking. Well, since and- COVID, people are definitely cooking more, like the rise mm-hmm. of the well, meal delivery services. Because, and I think that's because everything has gotten I so expensive. I think it's gotten so yeah. expensive yeah. that people are realizing, oh, I need to cook again. Um, but I mean, honestly, like, and this may be just like a whole other topic, but accessibility to just food in general has actually become a lot harder. Yes, it um, has. Because it's become so expensive, even just the raw ingredients mm-hmm. to just make something from scratch is still very expensive. expensive. When it used to be mm-hmm. a lot cheaper to yeah, make things Yeah, from so scratch. I have yeah. a feeling that there's going to be some home, like, kitchen changes. You're going to see a lot of change, especially now, like, people are on – like TikTok and YouTube and stuff like, man, you don't need a recipe book anymore. You can just go online and watch videos of people cooking food. Yeah. Um, so I'm really, I'm really curious how like our phones are going to become more kitchen, uh, like another appliance that you use in the kitchen. So, um, number six, and this one, I kind of felt really bad about putting it at the bottom of the list. Um, but I felt like for most people, they're like, oh yeah, pfft. Yeah, I have one of those. I won't cook without one of those. And then some people are still kind of sketch about whether or not they want one. But I put a cast iron skillet. Oh, I love, love, love it my cast iron. It is something that I use almost every time I cook. Yeah, yeah. I've used, I use almost mine quite a bit, every too. time. There's only a couple of things. Like, I don't make eggs in my cast iron skillet, and that's about it. <laughs> that's not on my list. I, um, I mean, I have one. I just don't use it like y'all do. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've used it, but mm-hmm. it's well, have, and it's sitting there ready to right. use. I have a, a cast iron skillet and a couple of cast iron um, Dutch ovens. So yeah, yeah. That, I, I mean, a, you know, a cast iron I, Dutch. They're oven They're not the well. kind with legs like you put in your campfire. They're the kind that goes in your oven. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're you know I use those all the time to to bake in. Um, I make soups in them. You know because they're easy nonstick. Um, they're a good source of iron in your diet, actually. Um, people don't realize that. And, um, and they're they're easy to clean and take care of if you handle them properly. So, mm-hmm. yeah. They, they sure make my food taste good. They do. They do. I've, I have, I can tell you there, I, I make my cornbread in a cast iron skillet. It tastes completely different than making it in a a glass an aluminum or, or a pan. glass pan, pan. yeah mm-hmm. completely mm. completely different flavor and it just tastes better yeah jason usually does the steaks in a cast mm-hmm. iron skillet oh and yeah he does some pretty good skate skates steaks <laughs> <laughs> he, he skates really good <laughs> <laughs> my brother used to call them snakes snakes yes <laughs> yeah Snake. I want some snake. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So um, my next one underneath that, number five, is cookbooks or good cookbooks. Oh, yeah. Recipes. Oh, gosh. I have um, so many cookbooks. I have so many. And you know many. what? 
And now I'm like, I used to always be like cookbooks, 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 but I don't know, like people get their recipes from so many places now like a, a book is almost a little bit more limited it's kind of obsolete mm-hmm. a book it, is almost it obsolete really is when i look at cookbooks now i'm just like you know these kind of suck <laughs> because you can't like cross reference well i guess, i guess it just you can't just on retrieve like, it anytime you want yeah i i i don't know like i guess it's just like um I have like my staple cookbooks oh, that yeah, I me use. Too. Yeah. And I have like my family cookbooks. Yeah. And those are family heirlooms, even if I don't really use them. I have my favorite recipes in them, even if I don't eat that stuff anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess it's just more of like a. If you have your favorite authors. I guess it would just be an, or a favorite cook, like say Pioneer Woman or whatever. It would just be like an homage to that person to get a cookbook by them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Like we have the Gordon Ramsay collection. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's Jason's I mean, we have, we have a, (laughs) I have a lot, like I have two Betty Crocker cookbooks. One that's a. I don't want to say modern. It was modern at the time I got married. <laughs> so it was like circa the 80s. And uh, and it has some microwave cooking and things like that in it. And and a lot more shortcuts compared to my original one that was mm-hmm. like from the 40s or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and it's like all black and white and falling apart. And um, it's been uh, Xeroxed and, and re bound in a different book because it was falling apart and things like that and and I still cook out of that but it's specific things that I always cooked out of before you know so Mm -hmm. um and and what I found that I was doing uh I as I mentioned I had a computer in the kitchen and I had a database of of my recipes and I started adding my recipes my favorite recipes to that database so i still have the cookbooks but i've also gone through and put them in that database to make them easier to find now they're not all in there yet but that's kind of a project i was working on so yeah that's where i'm kind of torn like we have a whole bookshelf of cookbooks just Mm -hmm. a like that's it I'm but like, they're wow, we got but so you know many. they're fun to look through i know they really and, are and, to and discover to at, something new to find something and new that's and look where at, i'm torn at because i'm like dang like well, i like just want to take out the cookbooks ones. are really cool. exactly right. like most a, of mine are like i have like a couple of ones that were moms that were from jello company that have like a lot of desserts and stuff and then we have like a backyard barbecue from nascar that has like really good recipes in it mm-hmm. and then um I used to always buy the ones at the at the counter at the grocery store that mm-hmm. were like Pillsbury's award winning. You know they would yeah. have these right bake off fifty contests. different ways to use a can of biscuits. Yeah, you know? yeah, I like those. and those were they were always very tested, tried and true recipes, and they're approved by the food company. Yes, too. unlike what you might find on like say allrecipes.com or something like that. Yeah, where you never know. No one has really vetted. Yeah, those recipes. Anybody can put a recipe there, and it could be terrible. Yeah, Travis and I have had some duds from yeah. even Food Networks. Yeah, uh, that's one of the. So one of the things that really like kind of chapped my butt like my mom's friend used to say (laughs) (laughs) it really chapped my butt was uh, we had a food network app and when you're saying like a nice stand for your phone in the kitchen Mm -hmm. we had like been pulling recipes from their app and i loved it because i could add all the groceries to my cart or i could set up a meal plan Mm -hmm. and then we had favorites and you could make meal boards and like all this stuff and there was videos for a lot of the recipes and most of the recipes were actually someone like from food network like taking whatever they cooked on the show and turning it into an actual recipe and you could it'll like reference what episode or whatever it Mm -hmm. came from and we really liked that and those were really good recipes and um we were using that app and then one day i just went on there and it was gone like a couple months ago, they, they just shut it down. Like, the app doesn't exist. So now you have to go to their website, which isn't mobile-friendly. I mean, it still works, but they did actually get rid of a lot of recipes. And there was one 
that we hadn't had in a while. And I was like, where's that recipe? I had literally bought the groceries for it. And then, um, like, that Monday we got our grocery delivery. And then, like, that Wednesday Travis is in there trying to cook it and the recipe's gone. Wow. That fast. And so I've been taking those recipes on from their website and saving them as a PDF. Right. And saving them on my iCloud drive because I have a folder for my recipes there. So I have them backed up now. But at the same time, it's like I kind of want to print it off because, you know, then you're not trying to look at your small phone, Mm -hmm. I guess, because I'm kind of old-fashioned. I want to look at them on a piece of paper. It's just like the debate. Like, do I want a book? Do I want to put it in a binder? You know, do I want to have 15 books or do I want to just take the ones out of the books that I love and then retire the books and, you know, condense them? Because, like I said, I have a whole bookshelf of it. It was kind of ridiculous once we got them all, like, in one place. And it was like, wow. (laughs) And this was after we minimalized them a little bit. But I really feel like, um, you know, in a perfect kitchen, actually having some recipes and some structure makes a perfect kitchen. Yeah, I I, I agree. So um, my next one. That I have number four. Number four. Okay. Spices. Spices. So, yes. All yeah. too many recipes that I see people making online, and they don't put any seasoning. And I'm like, what are you cooking? Because <laughs> <laughs> they probably aren't eating the recipes, or they just don't like seasoning. Yeah. Well, no. there's a lot of people. That yeah. There's a lot of people that don't like seasoning, and I understand that. Like people that my, don't like spicy. My and stuff spice like that. cabinet is an entire cabinet, three shelves worth of mm-hmm. one whole cabinet. And that's not even everything. I think there's some, like, in the pantry as well because they just don't, don't fit. fit. Yeah. But um, I have, if if it calls for a seasoning, I probably have it. And we use it. Yeah. So. Yeah. We've been collecting yeah. our seasonings. I love and- buying new seasonings. Mm-hmm. Like, going to, like, a seasoning or a spa store mm-hmm. and buying some of their blend seasonings. I've even made some myself, like a back when um, I did that uh, coffee bomb thing, great recipe oh, fails right. or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I made the seasoning that I used in the coffee bomb, the cinnamon seasoning. Uh-huh. Ooh, yeah, we have a couple of them. We have like a Creole seasoning, and like we have emerald seasoning that we made. We have uh-huh. an emerald book, and his emerald. Like oh, his BAM seasoning really? is in there. Wow. And so we have a jar of that that we made. Mm-hmm. And we have like a, some rubs that we've made. Um, and yeah. I like just like the the seasonings like kind of. I mean I have like. So I have my spices are kind of like yours. I got a whole cabinet dedicated to it. And it's like the bottom shelf is just the pure base form seasoning. Right. Like yep. cumin. And then the second shelf is all of the stuff that's Some like mixed together. Specials. Yeah, I all don't the things have that are mixed room together. In my kitchen. Oh, <laughs> you don't. And your have husband the is a chef. Kitchen. <laughs> no, no, we have one of those like um, hang like hanging bookshelf uh-huh. things that go on the door. So oh, we have right. a hanging thing inside the pantry for the seasonings. Oh, I don't okay. have enough room for. So, like, all of, like, the doubled-up seasonings and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, she has, like, I have two enough. cabinets in her kitchen. Now. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have, like, in a box the seasonings that we don't use as much. Right. It I like me sad. I <laughs> like having all of the seasonings because you can open any recipe, and as long as you have, like, most of the ingredients or you can substitute, it's the seasonings that you can't really, like. Right. I mean, yeah. you can substitute some seasonings, but... But it completely changes the oh, flavor. Oh, I don't have chicken, I have beef, or I have turkey, or, you know... I don't have corn, but I have beans, or I have it, hominy, or... Exactly, yeah. yeah. You can get away with a lot of that stuff. Like, oh, I don't have flour, but I have almond flour. Like, okay, it can still bake. Mm-hmm. But pff, you don't have the seasonings, then you can't make... You know, you don't have cinnamon, you can't make a... Cinnamon roll. Snickerdoodle or a cinnamon <laughs> roll. Yeah, you yeah. just, you can't. And so I, for me, like I have to have all the seasonings. As soon as mm-hmm. I get one that's getting like a fourth of the way out, I go ahead and buy another one because there's nothing worse than having under seasoned something because you ran out of something. Well, and something yeah. you have to watch too is that seasonings go stale. People yes. don't realize that. And so if you don't use them a lot, they do. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things that drives me crazy about uh, supermarkets and stuff. Now you used to be able to buy the small cans 
the little square cans, the little yeah. square cans, or even the little round cans of McCormick mm-hmm. seasonings or whatever. And now they all come in these big jars, and then they go stale, and they lose their power before you use them all. Sometimes, yeah, so. they lose like their potency. Yes, yeah, and, oh, that just so, drives me crazy. My grandma's twenty year old seasonings <laughs> yeah, won't kill it's, you, but they won't yeah, but it's they so really funny won't taste very them. well. Yeah. yeah. She when when we cleaned out her cabinet, um I think my mom was the same way. Like there were seasonings in there from the nineteen eighties. Oh wow. <laughs> like yeah. old, I mean, because you're like, ooh, I need caraway seeds to make this one thing of bread, and then you're like, I never use the caraway seeds again. Yeah. I still have them. And I literally like it's in a can. They don't make those cans. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. that old, right? So I'm like, that is super old, that caraway seeds. But I'm like, I don't want to get rid of it because I don't want to go and buy another, like, giant jar of it. Because, like you, Cause I'm like, good. I don't want a giant jar of it. But, yeah, those caraway seeds probably don't have well, any flavor left. You know what you can do instead of, like, going, you can go to a place like um Winco. Oh, Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just, uh, I think um, Whole Foods might do it. I'm not sure. I know um, Central Market does. And you can just go and get a little bit, bit of, of seasoning. spice. Yes, yeah, you can. Little, yes. I think sprouts. Buy a little jar. Some and of get, the sprouts also sprouts have. Might, oh, yeah. 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 Depends, like, the bigger ones I don't know how many, do. yeah. They don't have all of the spices, have, though. Yeah. No, but, yeah. if like, if you just need, like, a little bit mm-hmm. of tartare or whatever, <laughs> cream of tartare. So, uh, <laughs> Travis and I went to, like, this Asian market by our house because I needed star anise, and they didn't have, like, you know, like, the big mm-hmm. actual whole pieces. They didn't have it at the Walmart grocery, so I was like, just go to the Asian grocery store because they have it there. All they had was, like, this giant giant bag bag of it. And it was, like, I was literally, like, I need to make, like, toy necklaces out of it or something. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, you could have made, um, like, a poop. Potpourri uh-huh. or something with Meet it, yeah. Some dried uh, oranges yeah. and star anise. Yes. Or that's something. why I hate when you're going garlands. When when you get uh, you do cilantro right in a recipe and it just calls for a teeny tiny bit of it, but you have to buy this big whole oh, bushel of cilantro. You know cilantro. what? Whenever it says <laughs> like a fourth of a teaspoon of of cilantro, I'm, I'm like, like, what the? You mean heck? a fourth of a cup? Yeah, right. <laughs> half a over, bushel. Over yes. Why would you only put a fourth of a teaspoon I know. of I always, cilantro like, in anything? Overdo it when it's like one clove of garlic. I'm like, you mean one head of garlic? Yeah. <laughs> well, like I do. A, I'm so bad. Well, like Jason, he makes these potatoes that are his own recipe, like a thyme potatoes, and he likes to use fresh thyme. Oh, I love fresh thyme. And, yeah. you know, he doesn't use the whole, it comes in a box, right? He doesn't yeah. use the whole box of thyme, so then there's just like this thyme in the fridge, and I'm like, well, what are we going to use this for? You just need to make potatoes every day, apparently, to use all of this yeah, thyme. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. dry. You if you those. have those fresh ones, you mm-hmm. can hang them up to dry, and then you have freshly dried herbs Mm -hmm. you can bake them in the oven at like 125 degrees or 200 or something like that and they will dry like dehydrate or you or if you have a dehydrator you lay them on yeah and then you have then you have fresh freshly dried i did that with rosemary because yeah i think you can freeze them too i know there's like a Mm -hmm. way that you can freeze them like in um ice cube trays in olive oil Mm -hmm. I just need to do that. You know, I just let it go bad. You know what? I do that with the tomato paste. I think I've seen you yes, do that one I've time. Yes, I've done that with tomato like, paste. I have all these, like, little bulbs of Because I, I had a lot of recipe. I, well, I had a dressing recipe, and it called for a tablespoon of tomato paste. And uh, I actually have since then started using fresh tomato in it instead. But when I was still doing tomato paste, I would just take the rest of the can and freeze it in the ice cube trays because an ice cube tray... Is a tablespoon. Mm-hmm. Perfect. All right. So my next one is um, probably uh, a pretty common, like a duh one, storage. And I have, oh, yeah. uh, this can go any way. Uh, obviously, I was thinking of like my perfect kitchen must have is my little glass because we got rid of like the tupperware and we got these glass ones with locking lids and it's a set and there's like 
we got actually two sets and there's like big ones, small ones, all the way down to like little dressing things. And they all stack really nicely and we tossed all the Tupperware except for those. And that just like eliminated this whole like hassle of the lids and the disaster of Tupperwares and like, oh, I have this red lid but no Tupperware that goes with it, but I'm afraid to throw it away. Like, pfft, I don't have we that problem just anymore. recently did that. Oh my I, God. I, it I, I don't know. So much I don't know what happens to them because you will have right? lids with no things and things with no lids. I do not have that like, problem with the glass ones. Well, well, I, I couldn't like trust a... glass. I, I think I would have no. problems with glass. And these, let me tell you. Okay, so these, they're Mainstays brand. I bought them at, actually at Sam's. Um, but it was like 20 bucks, and it was like a multi-pack mm-hmm. kit. And I have dropped those on the floor. And mind you, I have tile floors. And I have dropped them on the floor so many times, and they do not break. Yeah, but you're not ceramic tile. Yours is like nano- linoleum tile. I don't, I don't know. It's not it's ceramic n- like no. that. No. But still, I've dropped them. Yeah. From the top shelf of my fridge all the mm-hmm. way down to the floor and just like, bam, you know. And I've dropped casseroles that broke, like my Pyrex mm-hmm. that broke. And those didn't. And those are actually like Pyrex kind of material. Mm-hmm. Um, the They're microwavable safe, no plastic. You know, they don't make your yeah. food taste weird. I have put them in the freezer and they didn't get like food crystals or explode or crack. So I love those. So that's like a one part of mine was storage. But I also felt like that is also part of organization. Because that's to me like you have to have an organized kitchen. You can't function in your kitchen if it's disorganized. Oh, absolutely. I don't even like to cook when it's disorganized. Right. Right. And then even after you cook, if you can't put things away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it just sits on the counter. It sounds like a bigger mess, right? So, for me, it was having really nice storage for food because we use those for leftovers. Mm -hmm. We have, like, a certain size we use for our lunch meals, and then the other ones are for other things. And they're kind of, like, designated. I always use this one for that and this one for that. And then I use that routine to keep things organized. Um, And to me, like, that helps. It's probably 25% of the success in the kitchen is just that kind of organization. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping I things agree. clean because, man, yeah. your f- fridge gets stinky when something goes bad and then it makes all the food taste oh, yeah. funny. Yeah. And then you have doubt about whether the food is good because the fridge stinks. <laughs> well, and I hate misshaped or mismatched shapes in the fridge mm-hmm. of leftovers because they don't stack well. Yeah. And then you have things that are bigger but older stuck at the back. You're and in a hurry trying to get to something because you're like, ah, oh, my food's burning. I need blah, blah, blah. Right, and, and then you're, you can't you're get to shuffling it. things around yeah. and then you miss whatever's in the back and it goes bad and, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. So I, I do agree with, with good uniform types of storage. I use a couple of different things. I do use Tupperware, not Tupperware, but you know what I mean. Plasticware, um, yeah. Plasticware. Um, I've, I've kind of started getting away from some of that though. I don't use necessarily glassware though, but I use a lot of, um, seal a meal food saver bags. Uh, and I use, I've bought, um, the, the Ziploc food saver bags. Mm-hmm. I love those because you can just zip them up like a Ziploc and reopen them and close them. Yep. But they have the valve on them so yep. you can seal them. Uh, I also use um, quart and pint jars, and mm-hmm. uh, gla- so I do use glass, but yeah. for m- more for saucy things and stuff like yeah. that. And um, so if I have extra gravy left over or whatever, I'll pour it up in that, or uh, a little bit of extra salad dressing. I have some smaller ones that I can put them in. Mm-hmm. So I do like those a lot. And that was actually my number two was food saver, ah. and I had not even thought about the canning jars though because i do love those i have my food like my rice and stuff and oatmeal and stuff stored in those and jars so, yeah. and jars. Like the canning jars would mm-hmm. definitely be i love the canning jars like a, and and they work really nice everything. in the pantry yeah because you can see through them yeah they make things look so and, much nicer yeah. than a bunch of different boxes like stacked up um but yes so i had food saver as number two because that is a lifesaver. It is a food Absolutely. saver. It is a money saver. It is one of my 
favorite appliances Mine in my too. kitchen. I use it and almost daily. Literally, yes. We put things in it. And we take stuff out of it all the time. And our freezer is full of things that, um, you know, recently we lost power. And we were easily able to transport all of our food out of our freezer to another freezer. And, um, you know, I was just really happy with the way that everything got transported. All the stuff that was in a Ziploc bag or wasn't in a freezer bag, I was like, throw it away. Right. Don't be putting stuff in my freezer that doesn't have a freezer bag. Um, there was a bag of, like, breaded okra that had, like, a uh, clothespin on it. Oh, It was, yeah. like, half bag. And then in the transport, like, it got turned upside down, and then there was breadcrumbs everywhere. And I was like, that is so gross. And it, it smelled like freezer. It was oh, gross. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, no more. Transfer it going. to a Ziploc bag. Yep. And you can even yeah. put the label in the bag. You can cut right. the Which we I did. did with my flour yeah, and stuff. We did. Yeah. I was like, okay, you can put things in a zipper bag if it's like a package thing. But all of our meat and anything like that that could get little crystals on it, I, we put in those uh, food saver bags. Yeah. So, so I, and I know we've talked about it. saver out of the box. You're yes. Saying. Girl, yes. Love, I love, love it. for a yes. wedding gift and I, uh, I haven't used it yet. That's yes. like the best way to preserve an avocado mm-hmm. for use the next day. Because, you know, they turn brown immediately yeah. and they, they taste weird. Yeah. But if you seal it up in one of those vacuum bags. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You can I'd eat it. It's the still green the next day. Big packages of meat. Like, because, mm-hmm. you know, there's three of us and we eat meat every night, almost every night. Like, some nights we don't. We'll have, like, fish or something else. But most of the time we have meat. And so I'm like, I'm not buying, like, five packages of, like, three chicken breasts. Right. Because then Cause you'll it's... have tons of foam mm-hmm. and those things leak. Um, even the ones, cause we get the one from Walmart and those are like sealed. They're not just saran wrapped, but those right. saran wrapped ones, they leak. Oh yeah. They get they're juice gross. everywhere. Yeah. And they're gross. So as soon as we get that from the store, we open all of those, chop the chicken up. I know I probably repeated myself like 15 times. Cause I know we've talked about this on, on the podcast multiple times, but I love my food saver. And that's what you and Jason, you know, buy the big package of chicken portion and then divide it out. it out into meals and then, yeah. yeah and i've been seeing like people get the bigger food saver bags like the big ones that are like a gallon size and they're putting things like carrots and potatoes and stuff and mm-hmm. like the can of mushroom soup or whatever and making like their um crock pot stuff bags. ready to go yeah, yeah. and then yeah. you just dump or I, make we, like a skillet we would go you know we would watch the sales flyers and uh watch for like steaks to go on sale because you could get like t-bone or ribeye steaks for 5.99 a pound yeah um and so we would just go buy as many of those as it would allow and then freeze them up individually Mm -hmm. so that no matter how many people were coming to dinner we had enough steaks um same thing with the chicken with the ground beef we'd buy the big packs of ground beef and whatever Mm -hmm. in whatever fat content you want yeah. And then put them in one pound packages and freeze them up. And it it's so much cheaper that way. And you have so much less waste. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then my last one. So, I don't know if I've mentioned this one on the podcast, but I know I've talked to my mom about it. Um, So, it's uh, another podcaster and YouTuber. Uh, I went down the... Uh, clutter bug and um minimalist mom she's another uh youtuber and a slob comes clean uh she's another youtuber actually all three of them do a um like an annual thing where everybody like declutters together Mm -hmm. on a day together and they have like courses that they do and um the slob comes clean she has a podcast that she does too and so i was in like my declutter phase and i was listening to her podcast i'm still like totally decluttering but she had this episode uh, about dishes math and she was talking about how uh the time it takes to do dishes actually like increases exponentially basically Mm -hmm. if you don't do them right then yeah and 
uh, this has been uh, something that's been really uh influential in our house mm-hmm. because i was able to like show travis also how our dishes math was really high like the numbers were high it was taking us a long time and if we could just do the dishes you know right away instead of letting them stack up then it wouldn't take so long because mm-hmm. travis would find himself you know coming to start cooking dinner and the sink would already be full and the counter would be full of dishes and it was like, oh, it's time to cook dinner and he'd start cooking dinner and then the dishes would, you know, They're pile up. And then afterwards, if he was going to wash dishes after dinner, it was like two hours. It would take him right. two hours to wash dishes. And then it was like, man, he was tired and it was t- time to go to bed. You know, it was way past his bedtime. And then there would be like, you know, this overstuffed dishwasher – to be unloaded and then there would probably still be a ton of dishes left over on the counter and then some of them might have got hand washed but there wasn't enough space for them to all dry or uh you know enough time for either of us to finish washing all of them so they would there would still be dirty dishes like maybe the pans would still be on the stove and it was just getting worse and worse and worse and just taking longer to do dishes and I was just like, let's try something different. We gotta do something different. And so I heard her podcast and um how long does it take, do you think, to rinse off a plate after you eat off of it? Five seconds. That, Ten. I mean maybe really. less than that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking like two, three seconds, right? Maybe ten at the most. To put your fork and your spoon mm-hmm. and your plate and your cup in the dishwasher that's already empty, right? And then how much money do you think it costs extra to run the dishwasher every day than it does to run it twice a day every other day? <laughs> that would be <laughs> the, the same. Trick yeah, question. A... Yeah. But yeah. if you think about it, it costs the same if yeah. you have to run it twice every other day because yeah. you have two loads of dishes than it does to just run it every day. Right. Right. So, but we think like, oh, I'm not going to run the dishes today because it's not full. I'm going to save money and not use, you know, dish detergent and water. And then I'm going to fill it up tomorrow. But then tomorrow it's It's over over full. full. Yeah. So then you have to hand wash dishes or run another load. So I was like, you know, we're not saving any money either. Like you can't use that as an argument right to not run yeah. the dishwasher i usually wash it if it's two-thirds full or yeah, yeah. I mean, we just started washing it like i'm just yeah. like just run it if it's not even like if it's just a couple of plates then just hand wash them it doesn't take that long right so but we always have pans because we cook yeah so i'm like okay let's do the math and i literally like sat down and i showed him that if you just unload the dishwasher in the morning and it's not overflowingly full it doesn't take as long to unload it right Right. it's really quick it literally only took our daughter like 10 minutes to unload the dishwasher so i was like cool now that's your new chore right (laughs) yeah i just saved myself like 10 minutes every week uh, not having to unload the dishwasher and it's easier for her because it's not so full and then now we're all rinse your dish after you eat and put it in the dishwasher so now when we get done with dinner, the only thing left after dinner is like two, three pans and some spoons mm-hmm. and a cutting board and a knife, you know, yeah. and that's it. And it's like, wow, it literally only takes like 10 minutes to get yeah. the whole kitchen clean Yeah, after dinner now. But you have to get up and do it right then, right when you're done eating. Yes. While you your can't plate wait. still While your wet. plate is still wet. Mm-hmm. Because if you wait until <laughs> it's dried... Mm-hmm. Then it doesn't come off as easy. No, then yeah. you have to yeah. soak it. Yeah. Right. Or scrub it or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and soaking is actually really not good for some of your dishes, like your pans and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they can get ruined from soaking. And then if you leave stuff in the di- in the sink, they tend to get broken, like the handles right. on your coffee cups get chipped. So you're really not saving any money there either because now you have to replace dishes more often. Yeah. So... 
to me, I think the perfect kitchen is one it's where there's not dishes clean all kitchen. over the sink. It's a clean kitchen. I it was really yeah. is. You know, you were you were talking about the the your perfect kitchen and one of my things that I first thought of was in a perfect kitchen it would be uncluttered. Yes. It would be clean. Yeah. That is probably my number one thing is that and and if you if you look at people's kitchens um that that have a really nice kitchen they aren't cluttered there aren't bags of chips or loaves of bread laying on the counter there aren't dishes on the counter um they there is and and you look over here at mine and it is not a perfect kitchen um <clears throat> but really technically you should have nothing on your counters that you don't use every single day mm -hmm. if you don't use it every single day it doesn't need to be on your counter. Mm -hmm. It could be in the in the pan, you know, in the in the cabinet or whatever, and pull it out as you need it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. there's there's no sense in taking up that working space. Your workspace. Because that is your working space, and and a perfect kitchen would have ample working space. And if you've got it all cluttered oh, by all those tiny appliances. <laughs> All those appliances no just take up your room, you know? <laughs> and and I, I look at mine and I'm thinking, okay, how long has it been since I used the toaster? Yeah. I don't know. No I don't know. No room to put the toaster. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> you know, the... Uh, All of my appliances are sitting We don't have a toaster the... anymore. We got rid of our toaster because we only used it like... Yeah. Once or twice a month. I and I was toaster. like, Psh, you can just put oh. your bread under the we don't, broiler. Yeah, we, don't use, we don't use the toaster either. Like, um... What I use the most is uh, my Ninja mm -hmm. and uh, my food processor, mm -hmm. and when and I keep my new like stand mixer out on the counter because that's motivating me to want to get back into baking because mm -hmm. I miss baking and that was used to be my one of my most mm -hmm. favorite things to do. So I keep it out on the counter because I'm like I have a stand mixer. It's easier to bake now. And I don't have anywhere else to put it. <laughs> Those are really heavy. I have mine yeah. like in a, I have a really big, weird cabinet that I couldn't use for anything else because it has no shelves in it. It's just a big open cabinet. So uh -huh. I'm like, oh, it's perfect. But I do have to get on a, the stepping stool to get it down because it's oh, so yeah. heavy. But yeah, I have mine tucked away. I used to have it out on the counter and it would always have like dog hair and dirt and dust in it <laughs> oh. so i was always having to wash it before L i could luckily use it luckily mine has a cover on it which is nice but um it's it's like a i don't know i don't have any space mm -hmm. yeah to put stuff so i know that's your struggle right now amber because you moved in with jason and you guys have well, been even he didn't really have trying any space. yeah he had a really he has a really tiny kitchen and you both had full... Yeah, my apartment had a bigger kitchen. <laughs> yeah, and you both have your own full sets of everything. And so I know you've been really working on paring oh, well, down and redecorating your kitchen. We've rid of boxes and boxes and boxes of kitchen stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we're, we're down to like... Um, we're, we're down to like one set of uh, cooking. You know, we're, we're, down, mm -hmm. we're down to all of that. Yeah. And, um, but there's still no room. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to put the bowls and the plates in one cabinet, and it's still a tiny cabinet, so they're stacked all weird, and it's like kitchen Tetris. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. I call it, is a kitchen Tetris. Well, I mean, even, you, you <laughs> think I have a lot of storage, but I really don't either, because it's, they're weird shaped cabinets. They're mm -hmm. really shallow. And, you know, like, I don't even have my plates up in an upper cabinet because there are the only yeah, there's, there, uh, there's like shallow, five upper yeah. cabinets and they're really shallow. And, and so what my dream is to someday have some better cabinets and I want a, an appliance garage. And I know yes. y'all have seen these where they, they have like a whole cabinet or pantry or whatever just for your kitchen appliances and i want them I, all i would love just a pantry in that oh one spot oh my gosh but yeah like yeah. um you know how you know how people have like the like the canning closets or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. 
just like to build like that extra room for all of like pantry stuff. Oh yeah. That would yeah. be amazing. Or um those um drink flavor hoarders or cup hoarders or whatever <laughs> on TikTok they have TikTok. TikTok they have <laughs> I can't talk tonight. They have um the whole like pantry just like reserved for mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. That was one I didn't think about. A pantry. Duh. A place for the yeah. food. Yeah, that, that I would do, be like I do a, love like having a pantry. Like... The The last two houses I've had are the, the only two houses I've had that had a pantry. In my previous mm-hmm. houses, it was always just a cupboard. One mm-hmm. of the cupboards, you know, I had to use as the pantry. And so I couldn't keep very much. And, um, and I do love having a good pantry. And... I really um, admired my mother-in-law's pantry, which was kind of, uh, it was a regular closet kind of thing, Mm -hmm. but the shelves, shelving in it was like U-shaped. So it went down the sides and across the back and the middle of it was, the middle of it was kind of hollow so that you could put cans. And the shelves were shallow. So it was like looking in a grocery store. Yeah. One of everything. Yeah. Just going across and up, you know, and you're deeper. The back shelves were deeper than the side. It was so nice. And then, you know, the bottom was open so she could have other things and, um, you know, like, bags of chips or whatever and they weren't in the way of anything and i think she had some drawers underneath too with um with uh like her staples like her flour and sugar and Mm -hmm. like a a big deep drawer and you just Mm open it up and they were all there that's what i want that would be a perfect kitchen my sad pantry situation is that like i think we have three shelves in like this little tiny area and i had to buy at one of those rolling pantries uh, that to put drinks and stuff in that are not you know, like already in the fridge mm-hmm. like protein drinks tea coffee mm-hmm. because it just won't fit in the pantry and we had to use the bottom part of the pantry well for cat food our dog food is sitting next to the water heater <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we have no room yeah. for the dog food. Yeah, my dog food <laughs> is is in my laundry. So yeah. because I have nowhere else to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have in our kitchen, we don't have a pantry either. And when we were looking at the house, I was like, Oh, that'll do. It'll be fine. And it's totally not. It's like um where you're supposed to put like your silverware and stuff. It's no. kind of between the dining room and the kitchen, so it's kind of like a china hutch sort of. Yeah, yeah. And so there's oh, totally like two cabinets, two drawers. Well, yeah. that's where we store well, our yeah. food, but it's really the top shelf is really narrow. It's really small. It's thin like yours, mm-hmm. and or not deep or whatever. And then um, the bottom is just like all cluttered. It's always full of stuff because there's nowhere to put like snacks and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, the, there's nowhere to put like a bag of chips. Yeah. So, so we have around the corner, around the corner, we have a sliding closet with shelves. Mm -hmm. And when we first moved in, my mom was like, oh, there's your pantry. And I was like, but it's facing away from the kitchen. But when you were saying an appliance garage, I could (laughs) totally, I just, it just came to me. Right now we have my games in there like my board games Mm -hmm. and Raina had a bunch of like coloring books and stuff there's a whole lot of mess in there so um I was like we're thinking about getting rid of the china hutch and putting some really big shelves like bookshelves oh yeah and putting our games like where you can see them oh yeah and then I could take the games out of there, put my appliances and my yes. pantry in there, and then move my dishes to where the food is because oh, it's supposed right. to be dishes there. Ugh. And then that would free up the cabinets in the kitchen for actual, like, cooking utensils. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Or, you know, b- mixing yeah. bowls and all that good stuff. So you're going to, um, instead of the china hutch, you're going to – have like shelves to put your china and stuff on is that what you're saying or what do you have in your china hutch like nothing 
Oh, I, I uh, see in my china. My hutch, china's I had in a to box it. in the garage. I in in I don't even have china in my china hutch. I had to use it for my kitchen appliances. It's my appliance garage. Yeah, <laughs> all of all of yeah. my uh, I have weird kitchen appliances. Stuff. So are in like it. in my <laughs> china hutch, which by the way, the shelves in the top were glass and they're all broken. So there is some stuff in there, but it's like pieces of broken It's more glass. like knickknacks and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, ooh, I have these really pretty cups that we don't drink out of in there. <sighs> Whatever. And like our collection of shot glasses, right? So I could put those anywhere. It's taking up more space than it actually stores, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, see, I'm looking for, even though the China Hutch was my great-grandma's and it's mm-hmm. important to me, it's also like this ugly thing I mean, I don't think it's pretty at all. My Same. mom was in love with it, uh-huh. but I don't think it's pretty at all. And it's just like darkening the space. Yeah, take a picture of it for your for your to remember. Memories. Yeah, for your memories, and offer it to somebody else in the family. And if they don't want it, curb it. Then they, nobody cares. They nobody don't. don't then if, if nobody, nobody wants it, wants it, there's no guilt in getting rid of it. Nope. Yeah. True. It's just um. Yeah, it's just like this. It doesn't match anything else I yeah. own. It's just this heavy thing. But it has been so useful, like right now. But I could replace it with shelves. Actual mm-hmm. storage. Yeah. Like that, that whole wall, I kind of want to turn into like a built-in shelves. Right. Yeah. And it can be for like the nice china can sit on some of the shelves. Oh, yeah kitchen appliances can sit on the shelves where you can see them and that's what i want to do i want to move the board games to, to where, where you can, you can see actually them. see them yeah then you think about them then you and think you about them you actually want to play them instead yes. of having them like all stashed away in the closet see mine are sitting on my bookshelf and i kind of want to mm-hmm. keep it that way because yeah. then i can see them and be like mm-hmm. um hey games Exactly, yeah, because yeah, we're gaming people. We want to play games. Yeah. So, any other things that I didn't think of for your perfect kitchen? Because you're the one with the weird kitchen. Oh, you know what so. else I think? I think every kitchen should have a window. Oh, yeah. Because it makes it, even even if it's just a window into another part of the house. Like, mm-hmm. you, I usually prefer so it over the So you're not in, sink. like, a closet? Yes, yeah. because I, I feel like you if you're standing at the sink, you should be able to see out. Into where you're not just staring at a wall. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. And I prefer an outside window. Like mine, mine is an outside window facing out onto my patio. Um, same th- at my last couple of houses. You know, it was mm-hmm. an outside window. Um, when I had a roommate, uh, when Kristen was little, we had a window that looked out into our den. That was nice too because you could watch the kids play or whatever. Um, but I just, I do, I like having that window there. So you're not in a box. I think yeah. every kitchen should have a, little a window. claustrophobic in the yeah. kitchen sometimes. Yeah. And a good ventilation system, mm-hmm. a really good ventilation system. See, y'all kind of have like a closed concept kitchen, whereas my kitchen is a open concept. You can see out of it. I would prefer, to, I guess, to have it more closed and um, Jason and I were, like, um, thinking about walling up the back part of the kitchen because there's, like, a door that goes through the kitchen. Into the living into room. Into the living room. Mm-hmm. We were thinking about walling that up and making it more storage. Mm. Or, you know, put wall shelves or mm-hmm. something like that on. And that's... um. Kind of what my mom and I did to my grandma's kitchen because she needed more like a storage space mm-hmm. for things because she had a door going out of her kitchen and we just covered it up with like a bookshelf. Now, I wouldn't say it would, but we were thinking about doing something like that to make more storage space, whereas I like the open concept with the bar and everything like that. It's just that that's taking up valuable storage space. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully I hit everything on y'all's list for a perfect kitchen. For sure, yeah. 
I'm storage pretty... bay, storage bay, storage bay. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I'd like to hear what an, uh, anybody else says. If I forgot anything, definitely hit us up in the comments on uh, MMC chat on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, hop over to our website, modernmusings.net. And what are we talking about next week? Next week, we're going to talk about the um, introverts and extroverts. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Or an amnivert. Or an amnivert. I thought it was ambivert. Ambivert. Oh, sorry. It's ambivert. Ambivert. Yes. Ambervert. Ambervert. That's me. I'm an ambervert. Ambervert. She's an omnivort. <laughs> I'm an omnivores. I'm, the, I'm an omni I'm, the, I'm an omnibus. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, my. Oh, my. And it's All right. early yet. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I'm an ogre. It. I have layers. I don't even know. Okay. Shrek. <laughs> oh. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> <laughs>